Hey, what's up? Hello everyone, welcome into Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill. It is Barbenheimer week here on the channel. We have so much to talk about today. Barbie is out in theaters now and it is blowing up the world. Everyone is loving this movie and audiences are flocking to the theaters to see it. I don't know about you, Dylan, but when I went, there were crowds screaming at the top of their lungs how excited they were for this movie. It was one of the craziest lobby experiences I've had in my entire life. But let's get the obvious thing out of the way. We are two dudes talking about Barbie. We might not be the perspectives that you want to hear on this movie. So I'm going to urge you to please go and listen to women speak about this movie. There are lived experiences within this movie that we just simply will not be able to relate to. And that's why it's so important to hear the perspective of the people that a certain movie was made for. With that being said, we're going to talk about this movie anyways, because we're excited to talk about it. I was greatly anticipating this. I mean, I wore this yesterday. I'm wearing it again. Uh, I had a fun time. I did have some small issues with it, but that wasn't for the messaging or anything along those lines. My biggest issue with Barbie was its pacing. At times, this movie flew by. At other times, this movie felt like a drag and nothing was really happening. But the performances, great across the board. Ryan Gosling, Margot Robbie, kill it. The ensemble here, everyone delivers. The production design is beautiful. The costumes are stunning. And I like most of the musical cues throughout the movie and the comedy, because this movie is a comedy, delivers in full. When the jokes are coming, the jokes hit hard. I would say I loved Barbie pretty high on it, but there were some pacing issues that did bring this movie down a little bit for me that where I can't say this is a perfect movie like I really wanted to going into it. I'm personally pretty torn on this movie and while I'd say overall I'm leaning positive I am still very mixed. Obviously this is an incredibly funny creative movie. The production design, the costume design, music all very well done. It's clear that this whole movie is made with love and passion coming from Noah Baumbach and Greta Gerwig. Everyone on screen and off is clearly so excited to be making this very silly, ridiculous movie. And on a surface level, this movie is total eye candy. It's wonderful. But it raised a lot of questions and thoughts for me that don't entirely sit right. It's a film that I think is packed with contradictions. But I definitely agree with you that I found the pacing to be a bit out of whack. While I wouldn't say it dragged, I just thought that it felt like they were stuffing too many things in at all times. And a lot of the ideas that they had didn't really go anywhere. For example, the entire arc with Mattel was useless and just felt like it served to remind you that Barbie is a toy made by Mattel and you can go and buy Mattel products right now. But something that I was not mixed on at all were the performances. I was shocked by how good I thought the performances in this movie were. And from the trailers, I wasn't sure how much the actors would be able to shine in a movie as goofy as this. It looked kind of one note from those trailers, which still looked funny, but I was shocked by the depth that Margot Robbie put into this character. So who stood out in the ensemble for you, Dylan? Margot Robbie, as you said, is great. And then if you go to the rest of the list of our varying cast of Barbies, I thought that Kate McKinnon offered a lot as Weird Barbie. She really delivers on what you wanted from that character. Issa Rae was great as President Barbie. And I thought Alexandra Shipp had a lot of highlight in scene-stealing moments as writer Barbie. And then of course we have Dua Lipa as Marmaid Barbie. All she really says is hi, Barbie. But like when she pops on the screen, it's really fun with the, I guess the, the counterpoint of that when she pops with John Cena as well. Super funny there. We get over to the Kins now. Ryan Gosling, of course, scene stealer. He's he's great in this. He may be my favorite performance here, but all the Kins really deliver. I know Simu Lu is a person that a lot of people don't really seem to like at the moment, but I feel like he was perfectly cast as that Ken. Kingsley ben was really funny as essentially Ryan Gosling's like best buddy Ken, but that's not to demean Michael Sarah's Alan, who is a scene stealer upon himself. But overall, yeah, I thought this ensemble was great. There's not really a weak link. Everyone's presenting something different. I will say to go back to my earlier point from the beginning segment of where I was a little bit mixed to this movie. I had probably my worst theater experience ever. People were on their phones all the way throughout and I don't know if that means other people were also feeling the pacing issues and the editing issues where they were bored in those moments or they just wanted to look on their phone because at one point someone was looking through Instagram reels and sat there and watched almost the whole Barbie trailer while the Barbie movie was right in front of them. The downside to this movie and Oppenheimer both being such huge successes and bringing out so many people to the theaters is that they're bringing out people that never go to the theaters and do not know how to act in 
the theater. I got that a little bit in Oppenheimer, which bothered me for sure. But for me, Gosling is obviously great. He's very, very funny in his turn as a surprising villain of the film. A villain who just wants to be appreciated and loved and, and just feels very left out. It was a deeper performance than I thought he was going to give in there. I, I kind of expected just a goofy golden retriever himbo. And for him to kind of go evil was very, very satisfying. But easily, the highlight of the movie for me is Margot Robbie. I think that this might be the best performance she's ever given. It's over I, Tanya, over The Wolf of Wall Street, definitely over Babylon. This is a, a beautiful performance where she nails a perfect balance between innocence and experience. She's going through this existential crisis where she's feeling for the first time. She's lived a life where she's just been happy. She hasn't experienced anything other than the best day of her life. And now suddenly every day is the worst day. And the way that she switches between emotions, that sort of fakeness, the plastic of being a perfect Barbie who never has a bad feeling ever to discovering deeper feelings, more complex feelings for the first time is amazing. She's like a child discovering the world for the first time. Her desire at the end to become human and being conflicted with the idea of being an idea that lives forever versus being a person who has ideas and agency of her own. That was beautiful. It had me on the verge of tears. This is truly an incredible performance that I think deserves Oscar consideration. Nails every aspect that the role asks of her. She blew me away and surprised me. Speaking of surprises, something that keeps coming up in the promo for Barbie is that this is not going to be the movie that you expect it to be. So Dylan, I want to know what took you by surprise? Honestly, not really that much. Maybe it's because they kept saying like, oh, it's not what you expect. So then I was expecting the unexpected and then I got that. I was, I guess, a little surprised how much did take place in Barbie world because yeah. like everyone kept saying like, oh, it's just the first scene. I'm like, no, over half this movie is there. So like when people like came out of initial reactions, like, oh, I don't know if it could get production design because they're not there that long. I'm like if this is an hour 50 movie. They probably spend an hour in Barbie world. So I feel like there's mm -hmm. enough there to get it to that nomination. But overall, there's some little like character direction that did go a little bit different, but it's like a fish out of water story and someone learning about who they are and also people dealing with conflicts, relationships and all that type of stuff so it, it hit beats i was expecting but that doesn't mean it was a bad movie it's just like they kept saying don't expect something and then you think of other possibilities like oh i already thought of like i guess everywhere where you could go for this i saw this movie with my fiance and while i can't speak to how this film speaks about lived experiences of being a woman in modern society it really cut deep for her and her experiences of moving through this modern world as a woman in a patriarchal society. So it definitely surprised me and surprised her that this movie was able to cut that deep with some of those themes. Now, let's talk a little bit about Greta Gerwig's influences. Yesterday, we did a draft video where we talked all about Greta Gerwig's list of films that inspired her while working on this movie. I guess something that came to mind for me is how do we see these influences of Greta Gerwig's reflected in this movie? And did you pick out any of the, the movies that she was referencing with certain scenes? At times, I definitely did pick up on it, especially if they directly reference said movie, like during the man montage, there's a bunch the of movies Godfather. from that list that popped up. And then there was the Godfather <laughs> one as well. I mean, there's definitely ones I recognize. I definitely recommend going to watch our draft of all these movies on this list to you was there any one that really stood out to you was like oh my gosh this is so cool or so inspiring or something along those lines well i i saw a lot of um of the wizard of oz for sure but i i will be honest this is actually part of where some of my mixed feelings against this movie really come up because it's so obvious to see that Greta Gerwig is really primarily influenced by old Hollywood and that sort of like playful artificiality that those movies always have where everything is clearly fake but we can suspend our disbelief to enjoy it. Movies like The Wizard of Oz are clearly made on a studio set with painted backdrops, Rear Window, and American in Paris. Those are the same types of things. It's wonderful because of how fake it feels. And all of that's because it's, it's this sort of analog artificiality. Everything's painted, everything's built. While this movie really aims for that sort of old Hollywood style of fakeness, it looked and felt so like digital in its artificiality that it, uh, it ended up feeling closer to the cat in the hat or the adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl instead of feeling like singing in the rain. And that's not to say that the sets aren't amazing. Like they totally are. 
it didn't quite capture the magic of her influences. It still felt like very, very 2000s artificial instead of like 1950s artificial the way that she wanted it to. And look, this is a movie about a toy. No matter how subversive it tries to be, it can never really escape the fact that it feels like a glorified commercial. And I feel like people are making this movie out to be some giant, bizarre artistic statement and that like Greta Gerwig made something that's so crazy and like how would Mattel ever let them do this? It's so wild. I don't think that this is any more subversive than the weird Quiznos ads with the hamster. You turn on the Super Bowl and you watch some of those commercials and some of them you're like, what the fuck was that? That was a weird commercial. Barbie gives me the exact same vibe. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much this is skewering the corporation, it's still all about selling you the dolls. It's uh, it's trying to pretend it's some subversive commentary on capitalism. It's very much participating in capitalism. And I guess the way I feel about this movie is the same I feel about every company in the month of June putting a rainbow on their logo and then changing it back immediately afterwards. Just like rainbow capitalism is a performative gesture, this is uh, very much a piece of corporate feminism. And it's guilty of so many of the things that it's making fun of. Like the whole arc with making fun of these metallic executives, that's kind of exactly what the movie is doing in itself. It is still largely produced by men selling to women. This movie is making a shit ton of money for all of the Will Ferrells in the offices of Warner Brothers, Mattel. They're gonna wear pink and pretend that this is cool for the moment, but the second that something like this isn't profitable, they'll ditch the whole getup. You know, it's awesome that Greta Gerwig gets to make movies at this scale, but I, I think people are acting as though this movie is like some sort of subversive rebellion, like it's a, a piece of punk art, but it's, it's not it's super corporate and that's a big contradiction for me and also i i want to ask like can something be camp when it's super aware that it's trying to be camp like i feel like part of the charm of campy cult classic movies is that they're really earnest in their approach it's the same way that like it's really fun to watch a bad movie that doesn't know that it's bad, but the second you watch something like Sharknado that's purposefully trying to be bad, it's not fun anymore. And so I guess I'd ask like, can a movie really be genuinely campy when it's really aware? What do you think about that, Dylan? I think that's where part of my issues come with this movie is because while the jokes are funny at first, it's the same set of campy style jokes, especially in Barbie world where after you get them like for 10 minutes, you're like, okay, let's get some new ones. And then you go Go for another 10 minutes and then you go to the real world i'm like okay cool i'm back on board and then like 20 minutes later it's like the same real world jokes over and over again and while i do think they're funny for the most part when you hear the same like variation of joke like three times you're like okay i'm hitting my point of where this is like funny because you're making fun of it to like you're just being this and just hoping that we laugh at because we think it's cringy like i think that's probably the best word to describe barbie world stuff i don't mean cringy in a bad way i mean like funny good cringy like when you're like oh my gosh i can't watch but it's so good it's just like when yeah. you have that same style joke over and over and over again you're like okay give me something else and they do that they just then revert back one joke that i kind of got tired of was the whole they'll be talking about like random things and then suddenly they'll drop a bunch of like hardcore th theoretical terms and mm -hmm. you're like oh haha ha, this is funny because they just said something that feels like it's out of like a bell hooks text that you would have studied in like a university level feminist course that joke is repeated so many times where like margot robbie will suddenly have like three sentences where she's like saying all of these buzzwords and terms that feel very far beyond the level of vocabulary that everyone else is kind of demonstrating through the film that joke is like hammered on the entire time i want to ask you did you feel that some of the themes of the movie were kind of of like sledgehammered across i think with any movie not just this movie but with any movie that's taking a somewhat political stance there's not really a way to do it subtly if you're making a stand you can't make a subtle stand or you don't really notice that stand like you can yeah. maybe pick up on themes but if you're making your stand public forefront it's going to be very much hammered on because it's like an ideology that i agree with i'm a little bit more receptive to be like okay yeah. i can get past the boldness and the bluntness of this and i think that's where it goes to like a movie like don't look up from a few years ago you could make your case if it's as bold or more in your face than this movie here. I don't have a problem with heavy handedness. At times, might have felt like it was getting too theoretical when it should have been focusing on like the more human application of some of these theories. Like you said, probably because 
I agree with a lot of the stuff that it's saying. I didn't have a problem with the heavy handedness. I do want to talk about one thing that I thought was pretty muddled in the delivery of the themes. The core theme of the movie here, when you have one ruling class, whether it's a patriarchy or a matriarchy, there's always going to be another group of people pressed left out, subjugated, those people will feel resentful and that resentment will grow. Eventually there will be sort of a revolution. And this is true of our patriarchal world where women are subjugated, women are not given the same opportunities, where men rule the world. And it's also shown to be true of Barbie land where the Kens literally live for nothing else other than their Barbies. And I think that it delivers this message really powerfully and shows how all of the Kens feel so disappointed that their life is not their own to live. The thing that feels so muddled here after the Ken uprising, the way that the story in Barbie land resolves is that they just say, let's just go back to the status quo. All the Kens will go right back to their oppressed role in society. That's a little bit tricky for me at the end of this film because it's making a statement about how any society that is ruled by one ruling class and oppresses another is a bad thing. I'm not saying that Greta Gerwig should have tried to solve the issue of gender equality in this film, but it was deeply unsatisfying after that entire arc about oppression, that um, the solution is just simply put the Kens back where they belong. That felt a little bit counter to the whole point of everything that the movie was about up until that point. Because the movie is about how anyone should be who they want to be, how your gender, your expression should not define your place in society. Who you are as a person, who you choose to be, is what should define who you are. So yeah, this, this wrap up was so unsatisfying for me. And that's what left me feeling really complicated about the movie overall. I think it did not stick the landing. One thing I think we can all pretty much unanimously agree about is this movie is making money and it's probably going to be one of, if not the biggest movie of the summer, which we are both wrong about. I know I was yeah. a little bit higher than you, but I definitely did not see the performance that's coming out here. And I think there's a multitude of reasons for why this movie is doing what it's doing. You could say it's memes. You could say it's just a good movie so people want to see it. And you can also say this is very much speaking to a demographic that probably has not really received a movie that fits what they've been craving for a long time. The thing with Barbenheimer that's made it so successful is that both of them look like really high quality auteur features. People see so much content now. You scroll through your phone, you see a bunch of stuff that's probably just as entertaining as most stuff that like Netflix puts out. It takes something really unique and different to bring people to the theater. And that's what Barbenheimer has done. Barbie is unique, it's different, and it's making people excited to go and check out this new vision at the theaters. And I also do think that there is a craving for female-focused tentpole films. There's so many male-driven blockbusters, and even a lot of blockbusters that are led by women are still just reskins of male-dominated films. For example, like Captain Marvel is a great example. That's just another Marvel movie which are already marketed towards men, and they just put a woman in the lead role and said, now this is a movie for women. This is the type of thing that's as distinctly from the perspective of women. It's written by women, directed by women, for women, and that is something that I think a lot of especially young women out there, have been craving in movies for a long time. We also have to mention the great marketing campaign here. They understood how to seize on a moment. They saw the meme and they didn't let their memes be dreams. They capitalized on it. They really went all in on making Barbie the event of the summer. And on top of all of that, you mentioned the creativity and the boldness and originality of not just Barbie, but Oppenheimer as well. These are both pretty much unanimously agreed upon great movies scoring in the high 80s to low 90s on Metacritic and on Rotten Tomatoes. Like people out here are loving these things. They're, the word of mouth is crazy, let alone just for opening weekend for weeks to come. These two movies will probably rule the rest of the summer. Barbie could end up as our number one or number two movie, depending on how it does. And Oppenheimer could be a top five movie. And when you're dominating the summer and when you have great critical reception, awards could come along mm -hmm. as well. So we are an Oscar channel at the end of the day. So let's dive into Barbie's Oscar chances. And I know before the movie, we were both saying Warner Brothers has a lot on their plate. They have Dune Part 2. They have mm -hmm. Color Purple. They have Wonka. They have this. They have four major contenders. I think two is the most a studio's gotten in the modern era. So we're like, something has to miss. And we both had Barbie just on the outside. I had it at like 11. I'm not sure where you had it right before the movie had came out. Now that we have seen the movie, do you think this moves into best picture? If Dune moves, it's in. If the color purple moves, it's in. I don't see Warner Brothers getting three in. 
and I think that this is stronger in other categories than it is in picture, especially if you have other Warner Brothers movies in the race. It is definitely winning best costume design. I think it's winning best production design as well. And I think it has a shot of winning best original song, specifically for Billie Eilish's What Was I Made For? And screenplay, although I don't know which category it's going to go in. From everything I've seen, it's adapted and like almost confirmed because it's based on a toy. It's taking those characters. And even in the movie, the opening mm -hmm. title card said based on Barbie. So yes, but... There is precedent for movies based on toys to be in original. They campaigned the Lego movie as an original screenplay, despite being based on Lego. But the difference is Barbie is a character. Barbie is not just like a toy brand as the Lego movie is. They weren't basing that on any character. Barbie is a media franchise with a character at the center. But that said, this isn't based on any of the other iterations of this character. I think it's possible it goes original. I'm leaning much more heavily towards adapt. So I also agree this is winning production and costumes. I had that before the movie and now seeing the movie, I still hold true to that song. I do not see this winning because if you want to go for the Ryan Gosling song, I think that Turtle is getting nominated. If it gets nominated, maybe it has a shot to win, but they very rarely go out of their way for a comedic song, especially when the movie has other songs. And Billie Eilish just won one. I know the Grammys gave her back-to-back -back songs of the year. The Oscars, I don't know if they would do that unless the song is a pure sweeper. Screenplay is something that if this makes picture, I think it could win Adapted. I know Adapted is stacked this year, but it's bold, it's innovative, it's all the stuff that you talked about Spider-Verse. It works for this movie as well. Supporting actor, as we will talk about in our next mid-year predictions that are coming out later this week, that was my category. I have Gosling in my top three, where there's a small shot for him to win, but I just don't really see it, but I think he's pretty safe in there for a nomination, at least here in July. Picture, I have moved it into my best picture lineup. It's my number 10 at the moment. Everything else, I'm kind of torn between because makeup makes sense for the hair aspect there's not as much makeup and I know hair is enough to get you in for a nomination but there's a lot of movies this year that have very showy and very bold hair and makeup and then editing we talked about the pacing issue cinematography probably not I don't see director I don't see supporting actress and Margot Robbie is like just outside where she could slide in so right now I think I have it for supporting production costume a song nomination screenplay and picture so i have that with six nominations here in july and currently i have it with supporting actor production design costume design song for billy eilish and screenplay so i've got it for five with two wins for production design and costume design and it could go into picture now the question here should you draft it for your film ball team easy answer here is yeah you probably should i think there's a world where you could take this middle of round two if you're like that three four slot and you are a strong believer in barbie's best picture chances and you think it's winning more than just costumes and production so if you think scores coming along if you think gosling could win if you think screenplay could win take it in that middle of round two because it's probably not making it back to you on that wraparound the point comparisons I would give for Barbie, I would say it's somewhere between Babylon, if it doesn't get a Best Picture nomination, and Elvis, if it does get a Best Picture nomination. Now, Elvis did have the thing where Austin Butler was winning so many awards, and Elvis ended up with about 1,200 points total. Meanwhile, Babylon ended up without a Best Picture nomination with 700 points total, and I think that this is going to be somewhere in between there. So you could be safe that this is going to be between 700 to like 1,200 points. And I don't think it's going to go much on either side of that. But yeah, this is a round two or round three pick. Well, for everyone out there, hi Barbie, please consider dropping a subscription, dropping a like, dropping a comment. We would love to hear your thoughts on the movie as well as going to the description, joining the discord. Cause even if you don't want to play the game, we have a community over there that talks about movies day in, day out, Barbie included and everything else coming out for the rest of the summer. But until next time, my name is Dill. And my name is Matt, and this is Fantasy Film Ball.